Hello everyone, I am Rohini Haredas, working as an assistant professor in electrical engineering department at Maulana Mukhtar Ahmad Nadvi Technical Campus, Malaga. In this video, we are going to discuss the various faults and abnormal operating conditions in the alternator. Now we know that the generating units, especially the larger ones, are relatively few in number and higher in the individual cost than the other equipments. And therefore, it is necessary and desirable to provide the protection to cover the wide range of faults which may occur in the modern generating plants. So, some of the important faults which may occur on the alternators are discussed in this video. The protection of the generator presents a very challenging problem because of its system connections on the three side. Let us see the generator on the one side it is connected to the prime mover, on the other side it is connected to the power grid as it has to run in synchronism with the power system. Yet on another side it is connected to the DC excitation system. So, you can see that the generator is not a single equipment. So, the protection of the generator should be coordinated with the associated equipments. So, it is obvious that the generator protection is very complex as compared to the protection of the other elements in the power system. Now let us see the various electrical faults in the alternator. On the stator sides, the fault includes phase to phase fault or simply phase fault, interton faults on the same phase and phase to earth fault or we can say it is a ground fault. Similarly on the rotor side, it will be a short circuit to ground faults. Now let us discuss each fault in detail that is three phase stator winding faults. These faults occurs mainly because of the insulation failure of the stator winding and these fault includes faults between the phase and the ground, faults between the phases and interton faults involving the turns of the same phase winding. The stator winding involves the armature winding and therefore, the automatic protection is absolutely necessary to clear such a faults in the quickest possible time in order to minimize the extent of the damage. For the protection of the alternator against such a fault, generally we prefer the differential method of protection. It is also known as MERS price system and it is commonly employed due to its greater sensitivity and reliability. Field winding that is the faults on the rotor side. We know that the rotor carries the field winding which is kept isolated from the ground. That is neither positive or nor negative terminal of the DC supply is grounded and therefore any ground fault on the rotor field does not affect the working of the alternator. However, a subsequent fault would cause a section of the rotor winding to be short circuited giving rise to a secondary flux which opposes the main flux in the proximity of the shortened turns and it will cause the distortion of the distribution of main flux. The flux will get concentrated on one pole but disperse over the other and intervening the surfaces. So the resulting asymmetry in the electromagnetic forces will cause the severe vibrations of the rotor and in modern turbo alternator, the inertia of the rotation is very large and the rotor to stator clearances is very small and therefore there is a likelihood of permanent damage to the turbo alternator. So in the light of the above, the very first fault on the field must be detected and the strip in a control manner. In addition to the various electrical fault conditions in alternator, we have to consider the various abnormal conditions too. So electrical abnormal conditions on the stator side, there can be unbalanced loading. On the rotor side, there can be a loss of excitation. 
mechanical abnormal conditions there can be a loss of prime mover and the overspeeding now let us discuss each abnormal condition in detail unbalanced loading if there is an unbalanced loading of the generator then the stator current have a negative sequence component the stator field due to this negative sequence current rotates at a synchronous speed but in the direction opposite to that of the direction of field structure on the rotor thus the negative sequence stator armature mmf rotates at a speed minus ns while the rotor field speed is plus ns therefore there is a relative velocity of twice ns between two here you can apply the basic concept of the relative speed we know that the relative speed is defined as the speed of moving object with respect to the another when two objects are moving in the same direction the relative speed is calculated as their difference when two objects are moving in the opposite direction the relative speed is computed by adding the two speeds here the two speeds of the mmf are rotating in the opposite directions and here the relative speed is calculated by adding the two speed that is therefore the relative speed is twice ns between the two this causes the double frequency current of a large amplitude to be induced in the rotor conductor and the ion we know that the eddy current losses as well as the hysteresis losses depends upon the frequency therefore both eddy current losses as well as the hysteresis losses increase due to this double frequency induced current in the rotor thus if the stator carries the unbalanced current then it is the rotor which is overheated because of the eddy current losses as well as the hysteresis losses how long the generator can be allowed to run under the unbalanced loading depends upon the therm withstand capacity of the machine which in turn depends upon the type of cooling system adopted the next abnormal condition is the loss of excitation there are several possible causes due to which the field excitation may be lost it can be loss of field to main exciter accidental tripping of the field breaker short circuit in the field winding poor brush contact in the exciter field circuit breaker latch failure loss of ac supply to the excitation system the simplest method by which the loss of excitation can be detected is to monitor the field current of the generator if the field current falls below the threshold a loss of field signal can be raised another abnormal condition is the loss of prime mover normally the loss of stream supply to the turbine causes the loss of prime mover in case of loss of prime mover that is the loss of mechanical input the machine continues to remain synchronized with the grid running as a synchronous motor and draws some current from the supply system the meaning is that instead of supplying energy to the power system it will take the energy from the power system and this motoring condition is also known as inverted running when the machine runs as a motor there is a swelling of a trap stream in the turbine causing objectionable temperature rise and damage to the blades and therefore the loss of prime mover needs quick detection followed by tripping of the generator the reverse power relays are used for the protection against the loss of prime mover and the last abnormal condition is the overspeeding 
the chief cause of the overspeed is the sudden loss of all or the major part of the load on the alternator the modern alternators are usually provided with mechanical centrifugal devices mounted on their driving shaft to trip the main valve of the prime mover when dangerous overspeed occurs in this video we have discussed the brief about the various electrical faults and the abnormal conditions occur in the alternator in the next video we will discuss the protection scheme provided against each electrical fault and the abnormal conditions these are the references fundamentals of power system protection by yg pathankar and sr bhede principles of power system by vk mehta and rohit mehta thank you